Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of my painting Sunset on the Inlet 2. I had just painted Sunset on the Inlet 1, and I had a lot to say about this particular scene, which I visited at the Delaware Seashore. The sky had a cast of green to it, along with the beautiful reds and purples. And I really wanted to master that color. So there was my challenge. I hope you'll like it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I started out with a wet sky. This is a block of arches paper. As you can see, I had applied masking where I wanted the strong white sunlight to be as well as onto the water reflection below. I began with some Quinn Red. This is a very intense color. And it's new to me and I'm enjoying it. Next I came in with some Cadmium Orange and some Vermilion. And I'm just loading that Quinn Red in there. Moving up to the sky where it starts to turn green, I decided to try to continue that orange color and then put some other colors on top to make it turn green. I'm adding some Quinn Gold around the sun. And next I get out the Quinn Purple. Beautiful intense colors, these quinacrodons, if I'm saying it right. And excuse me if I'm not. If you apply paint in just a single streak and that do not work it, that streak is going to stay there, and that's something I've learned. And that's how the sky looked. It was very streaky. The top part of the sky is just beginning to lose some of its sheen of wetness. And I come in with a layer right on top of it of phthalo blue. And you can see that the colors are turning sort of green. It's not really green, but it's as green as the sky seemed to be that day. And I was satisfied with the colors. At the very bottom, I applied a streak that was a little too dark. So I had to work that one out. And then do an attempt to blend it back in again. I'm taking that same phthalo blue and putting some streaks into the lower sky as well to compensate for that strong color in the upper sky. Now I've got myself sort of wondering, how do I integrate all those colors? So this is what I did next. I blotted some color out, put some orange back on top, and allowed that to be a cloud formation. Added a little bit more of that blue on the top of it. And then move down to the sun where I'm removing the masking. Back to the top sky, I'm applying another pale layer of the blue.
And then I decided to try some yellow ochre on top of that. I was starting to become more satisfied, and the layering had not yet turned muddy, which is very fortunate. The next thing I turned to was softening the area around the sun so that it would look very, very white, but not hard edged. So I'm applying color and I'm softening the color with water. This took a lot of blending and a lot of patience. Next, I apply the distant horizon and I'm mixing a a uh, combination of indigo with my Quinn purple. There was a far horizon and there was a closer one with some trees growing on it. Right under the sun, the color was so bleached out by that brilliant light that the horizon just about disappeared. This is the closer horizon with the trees that I'm putting on in silhouette. Next, I move into the water. I am painting around the masked area with a pale, watered-down Quinn Red, just to mark it out for myself, as well as, as well as where the waves go through and break up the reflection. Streaks of Quinn Gold are going on, as well as some permanent rose. And I'm moving outward from the reflection on both sides. This is the first layer. I will be getting more intense with my colors, but I'm marking where I want to have the colors and the waves going across the paper. And now I'm going ahead and wetting streaks of paint or water all across the water. I'm putting in much more intense colors, including my intense phthalo blue, quin yellow or gold, and cadmium orange. Next, I begin to build the colors up and develop the waves. This is a layer of indigo, which is my darkest color I use in the water. And then I begin to apply some yellow ochre on top of the blue in the water that I just painted. And that bounces back to the sky and that green color that I managed to accomplish with a lot of trial and error in the sky. Here comes my intense colors, and this is the Quinn Red. And right next to it was some Quinn Gold, which turns into a beautiful, vivid orange. If you like painting with lots of color, you can't go wrong with a sunset, believe me. I continue to apply these streaks of color, building up 
stronger and stronger layers of more intense color. Next, I removed the masking that remained on the water and the horizon line. And then I softened these hard white edges. Next, I'll be softening where the sun reflects on the water. I'm getting rid of all those hard white edges because they are not accurate to what my, my uh, photographic image reference was. I continue also adding more subtle colors into the water and layering more glazes to build up the intensity. And here you see me washing out the edges of the whites of the reflection of the sun in the water to soften all those hard edges. bringing in a little more of the Quinn gold and some cadmium yellow along the edges too. And that seems to blend them very nicely into the Quinn red. And moving forward from the middle ground toward the foreground and working downward. I do a color strip test and blend some different colors to see just what's working. And that's what you just saw. I was using that same piece of paper to cover over some areas and see what needed to be developed more by blocking out other areas. And here you're seeing me continue to soften those hard white edges of the reflection. Moving on to the final phase of the painting, I'm adding the weeds that are growing along the rocks on the shore where I'm standing. Some of the weeds were placed further back or were growing further back. So I'm using very soft and diluted paint to show their placement, and I'm doing them first. Just a heads up, make sure that you're happy with your background before you put your foreground on, because working around tiny little areas of foliage is very difficult. In this case, I was satisfied with my background. So now I'm adding the silhouettes of the rocks. The weeds themselves are not black. And I am using a mixture of indigo, purple, and Payne's gray to create the rocks. And I'm adding some alizarin crimson to that mix for the weeds. Where the weeds approach the sun, they aren't black at all, but they become much more crimson and they wash out in color. I don't copy my pictures exactly. So here I'm using my paintbrushes as placement markers to see where the weeds would look good. 
In my photograph, all my weeds were going in one direction and leading the eye directly off the page in that particular diagonal. I didn't want to do that. So I'm placing some diagonals facing toward the center of the painting, as well as some random ones going off the edge in the other direction. Now here's the weeds that are actually going right in front of the sun. And I am using a lot of alizarin crimson to fill in their forms. Getting darker and mixing in some quin purple as I move downward. And then going to my indigo, purple, and Payne's gray mix as they move downward in the picture. How many weeds to put in? How many to leave off? And how many to change what I'm looking at? It's sort of a slow and selective process. When something looks right, it probably is. But that is where my paintbrushes, as well as random sticks of branches I sometimes use, do help in choosing placement for these things. So I continue to develop the lead, the weeds. It's interesting to watch and see the small little delicate strokes that I'm using for these weeds, which is so totally different than the big sweeping strokes I used to paint in the sky and the water, which were expansive and very, very horizontal. I make sure that I use overlap as I'm painting the weeds and try to keep their placement irregular and not very, very formal or arranged so that it looks more natural. Now I'm going to lead the eye back into the painting with another diagonal placed toward the, facing toward the sun. And after I have all the weeds painted in as I want them, I go in with water on my brush and soften the edges of many of them. So again, they will not have such a hard line edge. I also use that same in rocks and softening the tips of some of the rocks. Here I'm adding a highlight to the sides of the rock that face the sunset. The color is very bright in the center, directly under the sunset, and I'm using a yellow ochre to softly show that reflection on the sides of the rocks as we move away from the sun. And a final weed to lead the eye directly into the painting from the top right. In my photograph, there was a very thick weed, a leaf, where I was painting there on the left. And I thinned it out. I sign my name and it's done.
I hope you enjoyed my painting Sunset on the Inlet too. Please give it a thumbs up and there's a button you can hit below to ring a bell and subscribe so you don't miss a single future video. There's some, click, some links to click on below as well. You can go to my Facebook art page. You can click on the link to my blog. You can see some of the products that I like to use when I'm painting. And you can also look at some of my own art products. I'm happy to get your comments. And I thank you for watching. See you next video.